You might want to just put it on the ground. Here we are. Yeah, I am. Oh, we, right. Yeah, we're already oh, going. I'm going to do selfie, okay. Just like that. Yeah, there we go. I'm with Devin, guys. Hey, right, guys. <laughs> Juji, you're, uh, is it 10 days out? Yeah, about 10 days. 10 days from, uh, big show. Mm -hmm. You still got energy to do all this silliness with us. You gave me some energy. Uh, you, you caught me on a good day. <laughs> uh, always so good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Hey, I, I wanted to ask you a bit about bodybuilding. Okay. And uh, first, what? tell me what you love about bodybuilding. I like the, honestly, I, I like the checklist lifestyle. Mm. It's like you got to check all the boxes, you know what I mean? It's like, you, the, the the food has to be this way. I mean, it sounds like it's limiting, and it also sounds like it's it's uh, kind of sad or depressing. But honestly, like that level of rigor and discipline, and just knowing that no one else is doing this, but I like the level of organization it takes. I like how it it carries over to other things because the discipline it takes to hit all those marks for bodybuilding is going to help me do other things that are important to me too. So it's it's, it's kind of like. Uh, I, I like that aspect. I like that level of deep organization it takes and that strategy and, and, organ and laying things out. So that's, out of all the sports, it's the one that requires the most of that. And that's one of my stronger points. And one of the things I like to develop, just systems, making everything efficient and easy. It's very precise, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, it's, I like that it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. And also the training is fun because it's like you get, you get super creative with the exercises and still build muscle. It's a little bit more forgiving in terms of, you know, you can go in. It's like you eat a buffet, you can choose a little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, I know bodybuilding still has its science and its stuff behind it that, you know, what works, it doesn't work. But it doesn't have to be so exact and limiting. You can still do a lot of what you like to do in the gym and get the results you want. See what I'm saying? So how are you able to do all these things? And you know, and, and and be at this level in bodybuilding. Like, how can you still do a backflip? How can you do the splits? How can you perform and all? Like, how do you not lose things? I think you know the answer to this, but I'm going to answer it for them anyway. You have to build it up long enough to make it permanent. Mm -hmm. you have, when was the last time you rode a bicycle? <laughs> or through a frisbee. Or through a frisbee. <laughs> okay. So uh, we just had you throw a frisbee. It's been 30 years since you throw a frisbee. Yeah. You can do it. But the initial learning curve of learning something like how to ride a bike or rollerblade or throw a frisbee or do anything athletic. Like there's a certain part where you have to kind of break through and then keep that skill long enough and then it becomes permanent. I I'll, I sometimes forget that a lot of people on this channel, my mm -hmm. channel, uh, you know, I, I kind of talk to arm wrestlers and I think that I'm always talking to like senior arm wrestlers, but it's not the case. Yeah. A lot of beginner guys out here. If, if someone wanted to get into bodybuilding, yeah. what would be the first things that you tell them to get right? Oh gosh. I was actually talking to another bodybuilder earlier today about, you know, when can you say that you've actually gotten into something? That was a question that was posed. I was like, damn, it's early in the morning. That's a good question. It's going to make me think. I was on a treadmill this morning doing my cardio. Think about when can you say that you, you're you actually into something? Because uh -huh. you, can, you can go lift some weights in a gym. You can go read a bodybuilding magazine. You can cook a meal that a bodybuilder does on a YouTube channel. But are you into bodybuilding? Mm -hmm. I think you're into something when you've actually achieve some sort of success in it. I don't mean like competitively. I don't mean against other people. I mean, you've actually like done something and made an improvement in it somehow. Right. Like maybe uh, you you, uh, you you added five pounds of muscle. You right. Know? Maybe you've gotten your, you, you've learned how to meal prep and now it's you, you're doing it every week and it's just part of your routine. You've achieved something. Mm. You, you've got a win. You, you made a win. I think when you made a couple wins in something, that's when you're into it. So if you're trying to get into bodybuilding, I think you just got to try things, and then you actually have to get good at things, which means you have to make some wins. Do you, do you agree? Like, when can you I say that you're into arm wrestling? I think it's, for me, I can remember when we first started doing arm wrestling videos, uh, they are like, say, top roll, hook, uh, you know, press. It all was like a foreign language to me. Yeah. Now when you uh, tell me those commands, I know exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. I've achieved something, yeah. meaning I understand the language to a certain extent where yeah. I can actually apply it and do it on the table. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? So I could say that I've gotten into arm wrestling yeah. because I learned something and I was able to use it and apply it mm. on the table. So what do you think? Do you think I'm 
you think I'm full of shit? Or? I, I don't know when it starts. I mean, I feel like if you love or are interested in something yeah. and see some kind of permanence of that in your life, yeah. I could say that maybe you're into it. Right. Because you've got some kind of motivation to grow that part of your life. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe it's as simple as that. So maybe everybody's into bodybuilding. I don't know. Yeah. I'm into bodybuilding. <laughs> My right arm. <laughs> yeah. I, I think uh, if you want to get good at a lot of different things, though, and even if you don't want to get good at a lot of things, if you just want the best life possible, then you have to repartition your time and the energy you spend on things for kind of like different things at one time. You can't do everything all at once at the best, you know? But you can arm wrestle for a bit, and then you can put that on the back burner and move to this. You shouldn't put it on the back burner until you've achieve some 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 wins some some little some little changes yeah so don't switch too often but keep something long enough before you switch to something else right and that's how you're gonna able to actually get into things learn things have things stick so you're not just like a surface dweller see what i'm saying yeah I mean, you can kind of deep that dig deep into something absolutely and then sort of like learning another language the next one's easier the next one's easy after that okay yeah that's a very good example i think anyone can immediately understand without even knowing a second language that it's probably a bad idea to try to learn three to five languages at once. But you can learn a second language, you're mm -hmm. really good at it. Yeah. And then learn a third language, you're good at it. What happened to your second language? Did you forget it all? No. You know a you lot know. of languages. I know zero languages. No, no, no. You know what I'm saying. I'm monolingual. No, you, you do. You are good at a lot of things. I think in athletics, if you're speaking about athletics, yes, I know a lot of languages. I know powerlifting, bodybuilding, arm wrestling, a little bit of rock climbing, especially flexibility, some martial arts, you know, right off the top of my head. Perspective is really interesting, I find. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, And I'm really curious, again, like about bodybuilding, because I'm interested in bodybuilding, but I'm interested as well in your perspective from not only being a bodybuilder but being like a multi-sport athlete what do you tell junior arm wrestlers or people who are motivated to get into arm wrestling oh what well, i would tell them don't get hurt yeah that's <laughs> i hey, absolutely. i would absolutely uh, well i mean from my experience i would tell them don't get hurt find good people that are looking out for you and not just people who are out for blood yeah um, don't rush it if I could go back in time and do it all over again I probably wouldn't have entered some of those exhibition matches and some of those things for yeah, you we, we did, fed you to the root we fed you to the wolves right away yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not blaming anybody uh, yeah I'm not blaming anyone um, that's just pressure social media and my own ego uh, you know, to a certain extent but I think if I really wanted to have a better head start in it I would have spent more time actually training the exercises a little bit more conservative table time with people instead of like actually trying to do good for videos and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And I would have just kind of layered it into what I was doing kind of like slowly and yeah. not so ambitiously. So it was over time, like if I arm wrestled once or twice a week yep. for like 20 or 30 minutes over the course of three or four years, I'd be better than I am now. And it wouldn't have taken something, it wouldn't have taken so much away from me as it did when I first dove into it and jumped into the wolf's den, you know, and the bloodbath and you know, tore muscle here and got all the tendonitis. You remember me complaining about that shit? Yeah, well, we arm wrestled the day yeah. for about an hour and a half. And yeah. I had zero tendonitis. There I had a go. blast. I wanted to keep going, but I was smart enough to stop while I was ahead. Do you think that at the highest level of bodybuilding, that one day in the, in the distant future, that the deciding factor could be the pronator Terry's? Yes. Absolutely. There we go. Oh yeah, that's it's, it's a sleeper muscle. It's like uh, they weren't judging on uh, physiques the same way they were 20 years ago. They're judging a little differently now. They're definitely going to be changing the judging criteria to hit that pronator muscle. See, prior to this is the right future. You this do is, have a future this, in bodybuilding, Devin. You're way ahead of the pack. Gl glory hole bodybuilding. Yeah. Just the arm. Just the arm. <laughs> hey guys. Uh, one of my favorite people, Juji, uh, one of the most positive uh, and blessed people on the planet. So, anyways, there's lots of stuff on his channel. I just film on my phone. It's way better on his channel. Go, <laughs> go check it out. Yes, thank you guys. I appreciate it.